So the first one is uh, what I like to call overgeneralization drive. And I'm pretty sure that everyone here who, uh, who does architecture has heard about that one. The symptom is seeing commonalities, which is a good thing. Generalizing things, which is also a good thing, but doing that to a degree that, it's not he that is not healthy. And um, if you're an old person like me, you might, um, might have observed that in your own personal life. I know that I have. So I'm um, looking at it as phases in a developer's life. When you start out, you're very enthusiastic about that whole thing. It feels really good to you because you finally get to apply what you learned during your training courses, university, school, whatever, right? This is cool, cool stuff. So finally, let's build no longer examples, but let's build real things for real people. And then you get hired by some company and you find yourself doing something like this. <laughs> Boring stuff. And you come to this conclusion, you have this epiphany that what people do is boring. And you enter phase two, the disillusion developer. Now, this is where developers and those who have an architectural strain split, right? Um, architects look at this and notice, well, there is something interesting here, which is this. I mean, this is generic, right? Generic solutions are a very cool approach to this whole thing. So why not turn this into a generic, in a, to a generic thing and become an enthusiastic architect? Now, this is where you spend the next few years building this generic machinery, this mechanism that will help you solve all the problems of the world. And then you learn that that's maybe not the best approach, because what you build may not ultimately end up being something useful. So you learn about all those things like keeping it simple and you ain't going to need it and approach it from a lean perspective and maybe build a minimal product first and don't try to build something that will take care of all the requirements that may or may not arise a decade into the future and maybe focus on individual stories that deliver value to actual clients and you become a disillusion architect. Now, that's, that's making it a little bit too extreme, and don't think that is really actually the case, but if you look closely at yourself and at the architects around you and the people who do architectural work, this pretty old quote from a fantastic article by Joel Spolsky, I think that's about 17 years old now, talks about architecture astronauts, people who are so far removed from anything that's, that's breathable, from anything that's in the real world, that they build these things that nobody can really put to any good use, but that make sense on their own, right? They create this universe of things that nobody in the real world is connected to. So go read that architect. Hopefully, in the end, you become the wise architect, right? Somebody who looks at a question, any question, really, and answers it with the same answer. <laughs> you could also call it a consultant answer, right? That's, that's kind of useful. 